Welcome to Living Life God's Way, another exciting session where we share on education, purpose, and career. This is part two of what we started last week. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be exciting. Stay tuned. All right. Pleasant good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining us in another session of Living Life God's Way as we continue our discussion on, on education. And today we've added education equals purpose equals career. And as you, you log on, please tag a friend, please tag a mom, please tag a dad, please tag the children, get them to come and sit down for the next hour and listen to persons who are very well versed in the subject that we are sharing this evening. This is, this is what they do. Uh, and I can, I can say 24 hours a day because I know that they spend a lot of time preparing and, and getting themselves ready. So please tag someone. The information shared is going to be valid. It's going to be important. It will help you parents in the journey with your children as they leave school, as they um, prepare themselves for the journey of life and the another stage of their lives, another stage of the journey of their lives. So we are, we are going to be sharing a lot of information here. I have um, Mrs. Julia Edie with us. I have um, Mr. Graham Corbin. I have Ms. Um, Sheridan Skeet with us. So this, these, these people with me are well-versed. The, the, the career is teaching. They do guiding um, children. They speak with parents a lot. And I know they have a wealth of knowledge to share with us this evening. So please tell a friend, please call someone and tell them that valid information is about to be shared now and you want them to benefit from it. So welcome to our program. Ladies and gentlemen, please, well, well, I want to welcome you to our program this evening. Welcome to another session of Living Life God's Way. Right, good evening. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks a lot for having us. <laughs> Thanks for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> It's indeed my pleasure to, to have you all. And as I said, as we began the program, that I know you guys have a wealth of knowledge. And between the three of you, there are years, I'm not saying that you're old, I'm just saying there are years of, 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 of knowledge that I know that our viewers and, and our listeners can benefit from. So I want to start off, and I'm going to start with Dr. Graham first. Um, I just want to ask, you know, last week would have defined what education is. So I just want to revisit that for a moment. I want to revisit what is education. Um, and then we want to define what is purpose and then what career, what does career mean? So we will go Dr. Graham, we'll go um, Sheridan, and then we'll go um, Julia. So let's do it in that order. And, and then we'll go from there. So go ahead, Dr. Graham. Right. So, so education is the um, acquisition of knowledge. And the, and the skill of applying that knowledge. That's what education is, essentially. Um, as for purpose, is this, <laughs> you want me to answer all three, or just one? <laughs> yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> so um, purpose is really the, um, the, the, um, the thing that something was created for, or created to do. That's what, when we talk about purpose, that's what we're discussing. What, what you were created to do, um, what, um, why you are on the earth, right? Why you are on? The, why are you a member of the of the world, right? That's what purpose is all about. Mm -hmm. And that's career. A career is really a, a occupation that it really cut, that that is focused on that um, a particular set of skills or a particular set of um, actions that you do. Okay? So those three things. Okay, Charlene. Well, um, in terms of education, I like the the, the word important. Uh, where you're getting information that is relevant to a particular area or your discipline, to so that active part in gleaning information and applying that information, that's the process of education. When it comes to career now, is to apply that information or um, to a particular part or occupation, which will be for a considerable, considerable period, and it should also present opportunities along with it. And the last one you said, career, education purpose. and purpose i think yeah. purpose when you ask yourself why am i doing that that's the purpose there the reason behind the energy or the catalyst behind whatever you do is your purpose all right 
Yeah. Thank you. Julia? You're welcome. Okay. All right. So last week I saw education. I indicated that education for me is preparation for life, applying that knowledge that you, you get through the educational process to better yourself and to better your society. Um, I'm still sticking with that definition. Purpose for me is knowing exactly who you are, having a sense of direction, knowing your, what contribution you want to make in this world. Um, having that career, having a career is basically making a contribution to being productive, being productive, being able to fit into a mode of work, an occupation that you love and that you can make a meaningful contribution to the development of not only yourself, but the wider society. Those are my three. I, I love that. And, and that's a good, a good note to continue on that you're making a valuable contribution, not only for yourself, but also to society. Because sometimes we can get caught up with me, I, me, and my, and forget that we exist in the world with others. Mm-hmm. As 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 we you know we we were talking a lot about education that last week, so I wanted to focus a lot this this time on purpose and uh, career. How how does some um, a young person? Um, I know that we we said that when you usually choose your subjects when you reach the age of maybe what fourteen or so, you go into third form, fourth form, and you get the opportunity to decide. All right, this is the direction I want to go with my life. How, how does a, a parent or a child makes a decision, all right, I'm going to choose science subjects. I'm going to choose um, subjects, um, I don't know what term you will call them, but uh, I want to be a carpenter. So I will choose um, subjects that were, what do you call them? Vocational. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, right. So um, how, how do I go about making such a decision? Because this is going to be crucial to the rest of my life. Or it would it would it would help me in major decisions as I move forward. How how do you do that as a as a child? Let's start with Julia with this one. How how does a parent do that? Or how do, how does a child do um see going forward with making the uh, uh choosing your subjects? Okay, so from very early um, last week I, I spoke about parents paying attention, finding out um, from their ch- children what they like to do finding out um, basically and observing how they interact with others and so on. So from very early, you when you can start to pick up these particular aspects of the, the child's personality, his talents and so on, then um, you start to pick up a sense of direction in terms of where this child wants to go. So you might have some mm. children who are not academically inclined and you pick up that from very early. You pick up that because you might recognize that a child is not a reader. Okay. He might mm-hmm. not be that well with that good in the area of mathematics, but you know, he can do things well with his hands. He can pick down um, some children. Some parents will tell you that, you know, that you can put the, a toy in front of a child and, and within two seconds, the, ch- the toy is broken down and the child is trying to pick it back, put it back up again. Now you, then you start to see this child starting to have this technical uh, ability and with the technical ability, then if he has the right sense of, if he has the right backing and the support, then you can apply the English and you can then apply the math and so on there to put, mm. point the child in a particular direction. So you basically watch the children from early and see what their interests are, what their talents are, what their skills are, and of course their values. And you pay close attention as well to the personality type. There are some children who are very outgoing. They like to interact with people. So they are the ones who are always out playing. They're the Mm -hmm. ones who will have friends over and so on. Then there are children who we will consider as loners. They like to play by themselves. You'll find them, Mm -hmm. you know, at home reading a book, right? And and now with the age, in the age of technology, you might find them sitting down in front of a computer and they spend all of their time in front of the computer. Now, things like that you have to, to watch and, and try to use to the benefit of the child. So if the, a child is not 
and now going to hell is not that there's anything wrong, might not be anything wrong with him. You know, he might just mm -hmm. be introverted that way, in which case he loves working by himself or he might do better um, working by himself. So once you see that, then you, you start to look at the talents, look at his aptitudes and then point him in that direction of going towards of, 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 of a career that basically will be fitting for him based on his um, personality type. So it all comes down to close observations from very early. And I would say those observations would have to take place between the first, the second, by the first and the second year of secondary school, where you actually start to get an understanding of the child. You also help the child to understand his or herself because you want the children to be able to answer certain basic questions. Who am I? So this is where we're going into purpose. Exactly who am I? Mm -hmm. And who am I has a lot more to do with just my name or, or I'm tall, I'm short, or, you know. It has to do with what are my interests? Where do I see myself going? So all of that is tied into the purpose. Who am I? And you, you get that, get the child into self-reflecting in that way so that they too can have a, a, a share, a part of the decision process. So it's not only going to be driven by the parent's observation, but actually the child actually being part of the process by getting them to do this self-reflection. And you ask them the questions and get them to think. And they, at first, they may not be able to answer you the way that you want them to answer, but you, you may accept the answer and then come back another later, perhaps another year, and ask the same question all over again. And then mm. you might really begin to see that this child now is developing because, okay, they may have given you all right. Today, I, you know, I, I think I want to be a race car driver. Right, so mm. I love cars. So they might, the child might say, "I love cars," and that's it. But then the next year, you come back and you ask the question. Then they'll say to you, "I love cars, yeah, but I don't want to be the rest car driver today. I want to be able to fix cars." So you ask questions, and then you start to build on the answer that you're getting from the child as you go along. And that's that would be my. Um, how I see it working out in terms of the home. Within the school now, um, I see it in terms of the planning, how we plan for our students, the type of assessments we give them. We focus a lot on just um, assessments in terms of assessing the, the, the actual learning in the classroom. But then what about personality assessments? We can provide basic personality assessments that will help the children to be able to start thinking about themselves um, in a particular way, getting them to identify the things that they like about themselves, the things that they like about life generally, and building on those things over time. Well, that's, that's, that's loaded information there. Graham, go ahead and jump in here, please. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, in, addition to, in addition to everything that Aunt Julia said just now, we also have to use the, 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 the other resources that the child will come into contact with like the teachers, the coaches for mm -hmm. different sports. Because you reckon you recognize that most prodigies, you know, in swimming and basketball, those are like those are those are discovered very early, you know, cricket. Mm -hmm. And they said the academy is very early. So it's, it may not be that the that the parent uh, may discover that or see that, but you know, somebody else is definitely gonna recognize that talent, recognize that skill, recognize that gifting, and mm -hmm. therefore will be able to advise because uh, as I say, the, the more eyes you have in your observations, the bigger, your, uh, the better your information is going to be. That's so right. then you can start to make those kinds of um, so those kinds of choices. In addition to that, once you recognize that this child, or you believe that this child may have an inclination in in that in a particular direction, you may want to start to expose that child to more. So, for instance, mm -hmm. using Julia's um, um, example just now, if you recognize that the child has, loves racing cars. On, on, a, on a summer, you might just take that child to Bushy Park and see how that child mm -hmm. buys the Bushy Park. Or you might just take that child to, um, to some mechanic that you may know 
mm-hmm. and see if that child is uh, you know has that really spurred that passion for um, mechanics or you know being an electrician carpentry making things in the house but as soon as you see the inclination or as soon as you get the information start exposing if it's short-lived then you know it's short-lived but at least you would have given the child every opportunity to connect and they want mm-hmm. to connect and that passion is there then that focus will then allow you know a bigger fulfillment later on and it will snowball essentially mm-hmm. well, that, that's fantastic sure Char- <clears throat> And you know, as 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 they all were speaking, two words came out, and I think some of will already resonated. But I like to give an illustration, and I the two words that jumped out at me: keep exposing the child to giving the child more exposure and experiences just in life. All right? Um, I never, you know, I grew up watching the goldfish in a fish bowl, and I custom seeing them, you know, small. And I remember I went once to a Zan restaurant and while walking, we stopped and we were looking in the little pond there. And I saw these long things, but they were looking gold. So I asked what type of fish were there? Were they? They said gold fish. And I mean, they were about one feet, one foot long. Mm-hmm. And it's like, gold fish? Yes. So in other words, what I'm saying, the environment mm-hmm. you place your child in will determine how much they expand or develop or mm. have a sense of purpose. So I think, you know, along with observing the children, we want to still expose them to different experiences. Mm. So if don't, a child is only experiencing, for instance, race track driving, that's all they will, you know, they'll come into that kind of knowledge. Mm-hmm. But if you carry them to different events, mm-hmm. different scenarios, and you know, observe as they interact, look when the light start to, the eyes start to lighten up and all these mm-hmm. things. You, mm-hmm. you take note of possibilities. Mm-hmm. And that's especially in the earlier years, you mm-hmm. want to expose them to possibilities. Wow, that's, that's a good one. Um, yeah. so, so question, how, how, how do, let, let's say, I am trying to remember just the other day when I was a teenager. <laughs> Okay, you're in touch. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, let's try to work out. Um, as a teenager, you you are not sure about a lot of things. And and sometimes a parent, um, you know, as much as you might have done it before, you may be at a place where, okay, how, how do I get this child to understand who he is or who she is? How do I get them to to come into the place where they see themselves as important. Like a child may ask, who am I? Why am I here? Um, what, what can I do to feel that, that I benefit others or I benefit myself? Um, so that you are not running around like a headless chicken, but you have a sense of direction. Mm-hmm. How, 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 when a child, and I'm sure Julia, this is, as a guidance counselor, these are one of the questions that even if a child doesn't ask that question directly, when they sit in front of you, you're, they're probably trying to figure out, um, mom, please tell me who I am. Mm-hmm. Tell me why, why I'm here because I have no idea why I'm here and I have no idea what I want to do. I just know that I'm at school. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how do you help a child like that? Mm. Um, that could be a difficult one um, because... Especially if the child is not, as Sheridan indicated, not exposed to a variety of experiences. Um, they have very a, a limited sense of who they are and, and where they, you know, where they want to go. So they become stuck. And the challenge then is to to get them to open up. So you have to then present them with a variety of experiences before you can get them to answer, right? Mm. So I usually start very simple and I ask them to tell me what they would want in life, right? Mm. What are some of the things that they would want? What, they, what are some of their needs? What are some of the things that they really would, would like to have to make them feel comfortable and happy about themselves at that point in life and they will m- most likely tell you well you, you they want to have a proper home 
they may want to have food, regular, you know, a mm. regular supply of food. Then you, they may tell you, okay, I want to be able to have a big house. I want to be able to have a good education. I, and, and from based on the answers that you're getting there, then you can actually start to build character for them and get mm. them to recognize, well, look, you can actually define who you are based on your dreams and your aspirations going forward. So, all right, so you don't have a sense of who you are coming from your background, okay? But mm. look, at, look ahead and see what's out there that is available to you and then start to create your purpose, all right? Mm. I had to do that when I was quite small um, because we would have grown up um, in marginal societies, really. And, and we saw our grandparents and our parents and family members working really hard. And they always tell you, oh, you have to go there. you got to get a, a good education. But mm -hmm. then, and, and, you, you, and they would say to you, go there and get that good education because they want you to be in a better job than I am in now. Right? So you, you felt, okay, your purpose is to go there and get an education. So is that mm. all? Right, so I had to answer that question. No, um, I am a human being, and I have to find my way in this world. But I want to make a contribution. How do I make a contribution? How do I make someone else's life better? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I then had to create that understanding for myself because certainly there was no one to do it for me. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Graham, I want I want you to because uh, I know you were sharing earlier bef before we actually went live uh, on the the area of uh, the aspect of purpose, and I think some of what you were sharing earlier was very valid and very important, and I I want our viewers to benefit from this knowledge that you were sharing. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember what you were saying, but could you could you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, well, you know, for the most part, you know, a lot we we come into this world, we we trying to figure out what we are here to do why why are we on the earth okay and a, lo a lot of times we um we go through you know a large portion of our lives and we, and it, we may not come to that understanding that that knowledge of why are we here and um what can happen is, is uh, and and because of that to be honest you know there's a quick there's a lot of unfulfillment because you don't necessarily know if you're doing the right thing if or if, if you're if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and, um, and, and, you know, once, once you, the first thing that you have to understand that we want, we want, we want children and parents to understand is that um, everybody is here for a reason. There's a reason why you are on the earth. There's a reason why you were born. There's a reason why um, your, your, your parents had you. There's a reason why you're, no matter what the circumstances are, because, you know, very often, you know, the circumstances tend to skew your perception of reasons why you are here and not. If you, you grow up in a hard, hard, hard in times, and they think that, you know, you are not here for any, you don't know why you are here, or you are here to suffer. And mm -hmm. you want to make that clear that you're not here to suffer, but there, is a, but there is a definite purpose for you being on the earth. And that purpose is not just for you. <laughs> that yeah. purpose is for somebody else, in, in addition mm -hmm. to you as well. Right? Mm -hmm. And therefore, yeah. I, I, I one of the things is, is that, Oh, and, it, and it, was, it was came to me just now is that one of the things is that we we don't necessarily remember um, information, but we recognize we remember information encompassed in events. Mm -hmm. We remember in, in, information encompassed the memories. And, and I'll, I'll show you a little scenario here. The interesting thing is like if you go to every any any um, graduation ceremony nowadays, what you find tremendously interesting mm -hmm. is that everybody is taking pictures. Everybody has their cell phone. Everybody's taking pictures. You know why? Because everybody want, 20 years from now wants to remember the event. They want to remember everything that was going on in that particular situation. Mm -hmm. And one thing that, 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 we, what, what, that we understand very well when we see purpose is the event that creates purpose. It's mm. the situation where we are placed in a context where the various things are going on and we see ourselves move into a place and all of a sudden, this is what I've been made to do. So, right, and, and, and that is, and so therefore, I would say we as educators, we as parents, we as um, any, anybody else that's included in the whole 
partnership of the young people really has to not only provide information, but provide experiences yes, yes. that connect that information to purpose. So you, mm. you recognize that you have this particular gift, have this particular talent. And when you're placed in that environment, in that particular experience, bam, you see, before anybody else sees what you have, what has to be done, you see it. And you get to move, and you start to move to do it. But and very often, purpose comes about straight from that. Being placed in the environment, in a situation, in circumstance, and the experience, and, me, and coming forward and understanding, this is the reason why I am here, right? So, you know, and it, and it, and it puts things in context, especially for us as, 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 as educators, because when we come in the classroom, we are often are really focused on getting that information, but we mm-hmm. may need to shift a little bit and start to provide an experience mm-hmm. in addition to the information so that yes, sir. a child can step into the experience and see their purpose and acquire the information simultaneously in order to fulfill what they have to do. Mm-hmm. Well, 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 well said, Dr. Graham. That well, well said. Charlene, I want to jump in here. I want to ask you a question. Let, let's say a child came to you um, and the child says, Mom, I, 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 I feel like I am here to draw and, and color and paint and I feel that when I do it, it will make others happy. But then a parent comes to you and his parent says, Miss Key, there's no money in, 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 in painting. How, 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 what, what kind of life would you live as a painter? How, I'm, I, I don't know if you've had experiences like that. <clears throat> but oh, yeah. how, oh, you have? Okay. Well, then, then you'll be able to tell us, give us first hand information. Share, share, yeah. share with us. Share with us. Well, the, the thing is, as you said, it happened on numerous occasions. And the reason, well, was always because of lack of knowledge or experience. Uh, so therefore, what you need to do is to sit them down, help them to recognize what is art, the development of art, the correct pathway you can take in art, the mm-hmm. possibilities, and you must point them to persons that they may know or know about who mm-hmm. have went through the system and who are making it. All right. So therefore, when they ask in terms of either art or music, and you can call out names of past students, and, and well, in my case, you might hear about Nick Sink or another artist, you might hear about um, Larynx and all of these persons who are quite visible out there. In other words, there are possibilities that are experiencing, but mm. you also have to equip them with the understanding how they can gain income through the career. And sometimes when I even share my own life story, then they say, well, I didn't know, right? But everything, everything is based on knowledge. So therefore, you have to give them information. And therefore, we have books. Actually, I didn't know you were going to jump that on me, but <laughs> that's why I love the Holy Spirit. It says, how to match your field of studies to job opportunities. Mm-hmm. For instance, it's an art, mm-hmm. right? So with this now, if you like to draw, I can go through and show them possibilities. And then sometimes they say, well, I have family in England, so they can study in England. Mm-hmm. Or they can X, Y, and Z. And then I might be able to say, yeah, we have a past student. Her name is mm-hmm. Carla. She studied in Canada. She was one of, on the dean's list. She's a jeweler. And she's now, she has her own practice in mm-hmm. Canada. I can tell them about the architectural student who did so well that they hired him. So he never mm-hmm. returned to Barbados. So when mm-hmm. I give that Samples like that, or I can tell them, well, this student, another three students or more, they would have gained scholarship. This is the other mm-hmm. thing. And my mm-hmm. child gained scholarship at art. Mm-hmm. Definitely, we've had more than two students, three students, all in career of art. Mm-hmm. Art was one of their subject areas. So it's a matter mm-hmm. of, you know, giving them the information that is needed, you know. And um, sometimes persons try to capture what is my purpose? I, I'm just adding that as well. What is my purpose? As you said, um, you draw because you want to make them happy. And that's mm. fine. That's good. It's a starting point. You need to start yeah. somewhere. Oh but I always tell students, okay, give yourself time. Give yourself time. And I'll tell you why I do that. Let's look at the life of Christ. Even when he was around 13 years old and Mary was looking for him, couldn't find him. But eventually when she found him, what did he say? I must be about my father's business. Mm-hmm. Interesting. He didn't say purpose. He said business. 
Mm. Business like number of activities that will mm. lead to the purpose. So therefore, to, to put it in bite size or step size, I say let's work on getting a career path. That's your business at this stage. Don't, don't give yourself all that thing. Because I'll tell you honestly, I didn't get my sense of purpose until I was an adult. I mm. knew I wanted to teach, but the real reason for why I was teaching, I can tell you what, what happened. But to help this, this child, just stick with subject, you know, you start with subject that you really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. And those you tend to get, you know, easily over 75 and 80s and in the 90s. So, you know, this is putting you in a certain career path. Now, with these subject areas, now, these are the careers that are available to you. Mm -hmm. And then they might, but I like so-and-so, and, -so and I'm, I'm, they're inquisitive about it. So the parents will create the opportunities for them to go and glean more information or the career showcase. And then from there, when they get onto the career path, they might recognize the purpose. To mm -hmm. me, I always want to teach, and I'll just give my personal thing. But when my, um, my sister passed away and she was 19, I remember when I went um, at the graveside and I promised her because she was always this person who knew what she was about. Uh, she always into God, and but she had a keen sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. So I promised at that point in time that I, um, as a teacher, I'm not just going to give them information, but I'm going to try to encourage the child to feel good about themselves and to help the child find their sense of purpose mm. and when i thought that teaching had on a different meaning even if i got fed up of the paperwork i was glad to see the students mm. you know you, you had a reason for getting up with all the frustrations limitations financial for teaching and everything you still got up and go to work because you know what there are students who are looking there something in there is more than just a career mm. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. And that, that, that's great because I'm, I'm trying to marry purpose and education and career together because I'm, my thought is, and you guys can, can help me along here. My thought is, is if you understand why you are here, if you come to some sense of why you exist, not, you don't, um, and Dr. Graham said it earlier. And I think sometimes, um, children feel that they are born to be unhappy. And when you talk to them, they, they feel like life is going to do me an injustice. So they are, already have preconceived notions that this is what is going to happen to me. So yes. I could as well mm -hmm. do this. I could as well do this. So but we won't want them to be in a place where they're saying I could as well, but to understand that you are valuable. There's this great potential inside of you. Now, what are you going to do with the potential that's inside of you? Um, are you going to expand it? Are you going to help others with it? Or why, what are you going to do with it? And I think um, if we can get persons, uh, including parents, to identify purpose, it is purpose that we are seeking, then everything else will, will, will fall into place. Because then you may find it easier to, to educate if you understand purpose. And then you yeah. are, you will go mm -hmm. into your career if you understand purpose. So that those two have significant meaning if the center is 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 purpose, do you do you all agree with me or you don't agree with me? I, I agree with you, but the only the only thing I would say is in terms of purpose, don't lock down purpose as a beginning point because not mm -hmm. everyone will come to that sense of purpose, mm -hmm. right? Some they mm -hmm. might find career pathway first, and then the purpose resonates or it hits them, right? Mm -hmm. So with the child, different personalities, different experiences. You have mm. to remain open and as much as possible help them to remain calm and not frustrated, especially when them go, when they're going into third form. You know, okay. mm -hmm. Julia, you want you were yes. going to say so? Um, as you saw, I was thinking about a a, a plan, um, a four step plan really, and it's a four step plan that we tend to use when we are looking at career planning. Step one. Knowing yourself. And I want to just uh, put you on pause there, Julia. I want parents mm -hmm. to, to make note of this because I've heard you share some of this before. And I know this is vital. So parents, get your pens, get a piece of paper or something and make some notes. Could you start with step one again, please? Okay. Step one, knowing yourself. So you want the child to 
get a good understanding of exactly who he or she is. And in this step, the, the child is gathering information about himself. Um, the purpose of the information is to tune into their, their identified interests, their values, their beliefs, their personality, their skills, whatever strengths they have, they, even their learning styles in the classroom and the preferred lifestyle. Now, this is an important exercise since people who choose occupations tend to match their interests, their values and skills, um, along with the work that they feel comfortable doing. So step one is knowing yourself. Step two is all about exploring the possibilities, seeing what is out there for me. So looking at the various career options, talking to people in various careers, going out there and even perhaps volunteering with um, organizations. So if you have a child who loves animals, but he's not sure as to whether he wants a career as a, a vet or what, he has no idea what he wants to do, but he loves animals, go do some volunteer work with maybe the RC. Um, PCA or ARC or one of those places with the, um, look after animals, do volunteer work so that you get a sense of what is available to you. Mm. Um, getting out there and finding out, working with, if you have parents who are in careers, you know, ask them about their careers, get them to talk, get, get the parents to talk to the children about this uh, specific careers not with the intention of the children choosing the, their, their parents' career as their own, but knowing more about what it is that their parents are doing. Then go out into the wider community, ask questions. So a child might want to be mm. a postman, but has never spoken to a postman at all, but their right. postman is passing in, in the village every day. So talk to the postman about his job. What is it? What do, do you have to do on a daily basis? Um, is it only about delivering mail? This is how you gather information. So you mm -hmm. explore the possibilities. Of course, when there are career fairs and so on, go out there and mingle. And the parents, when we, when we have our annual national career showcase, um, the children come, but the parents, hardly any parents come along with them. The parents mm. should really come and be present and, See what is available for them. Sometimes the children go to the National Career Showcase and it's all about um, socializing. And I encourage the children, no, this is not socializing time. This is about yeah. going out there and seeing what is available in a range of areas. And then, of course, in that area, this is summer job hunting um, internships. And I was talking to... Um, Brian this morning, I was telling him about my internship program that I have planned <laughs> at school where the students in the upper fifth group, they get to intern in specific firms and they are assigned to, mentors are assigned to them who are actually working with them, helping them to learn the task, helping them to develop work ethics and so on. So mm. internships come in very handy. Some internships may be paid internships. Some may not be paid internships. The internships that are paid are primarily to help the, the, the student be able to get lunch and bus fare and so on. Um, the intention is not about going out there looking for money, but being able to learn about the career um, choices that you would have selected to go into the internship. So job, mm -hmm. some are uh, job internships help in that regard. Okay. The next area, of course, there's research. You, you, you. I, Is this I, number three? No, right. we're still at number three. Oh, number two. Okay. We're still looking at the possibilities. Number two. Okay. Okay. Of okay. course, there's the internet. We have the internet is there with a wealth of knowledge, but we do not utilize it well. We do not utilize it well. We utilize it for all sorts of things, but we don't use it to get gather information. Um, you can go out there and find a lot of information on the different types of careers. Some of it might be applicable to our country, some may not. But the world is such a small place these days that, you know, 
you don't have to become fine. You could be working in Barbados and, and, and mm. you are working for someone in Dubai. You don't yes. have to leave Barbados to, to work overseas anymore. But yes. there, are, there are so many opportunities that are available that you can read and do research about with regards to looking at the possibilities. So after you've looked at the possibilities, you can go on to number three, having a, a sense of choosing a direction. That's number three, step three, choosing a direction. So if you have the knowledge in terms of the different careers out there and you start developing a vision as to where you want to be. And when you start to develop that vision of where you want to be, be then you start to zero in. How am I going to get there? So you choose a direction. Maybe you might choose two because I usually say have a plan A and a plan B just in case. Some people might go on and say have a plan, have a plan C. So you, you have, you know, these options available, choose a direction. And once you've chosen that direction, start putting things in place for you to pursue the goal. Now, pursuing the goal, therefore, becomes number four. So you start to look at the educational, the education that you need to get. So you start mm -hmm. looking at what education do I need to get? So I want to become a vet. But a vet is really an animal doctor. So I have to do the sciences. I have to do math. I have to be good with my math. I have to be good with my English. I have to be able to communicate with others. I have to be able to understand the animals. So you look at the, su the subject areas that you have to choose when you are pursuing your goal in order to be able to find that direction in terms of being prepared um, with the, the particular qualifications and going the particular mm. pathway that you want to go. Of course, if you recognize that when you looked at the possibilities you want to get in the technical and vocational area, then it does not make sense um, going down a, a, an academic pathway solely because you want to be able to get into a, the technical and vocational area. So this is where you start looking at what is available in terms of post-secondary level education, um, at the Polytechnic, like the SJPI here in Barbados, even the BCC, the Barbados Community College, um, for those children um, who may not necessarily have the qualifications to get into BCC or, or even SJPI now because the, the competition for places at the SJPI have become very competitive, what there are still opportunities for for children. So there's something for everybody. There's this skills training, the Barbados Vocational Skills Training Program here. We even have the Advanced Youth Core. That is the program which replaces the youth service. And that helps the, the young, young person who might have left school without a sense of direction and purpose and discipline and so on. Mm -hmm. That helps to bring that person back in line, removing them from their regular home environment, putting them in a controlled environment, providing them with discipline, and then allowing them to be able to access opportunities in the various technical and vocational areas if they want to go back and study CXC areas um, in order to get academic qualifications that is there. So within the Barbadian society, particularly, I believe there is something for everyone. It's just a matter of how you are going about it. So I'll go through those, those four steps again. Mm. One, and I can't prepare with it, so I have it here. <laughs> I have it here in my notes. <laughs> one, step one, knowing, having, getting the child to know him or herself. So knowing yourself. Step two, exploring the possibilities. Mm. Step three, Choosing a direction, and then, and even though it says choosing a direction, have may have you may have a, a backup plan that you can resort to if needs be, and mm -hmm. then pursuing your goals. And pursuing your goals would be starting from the basics of understanding what academic um, and what technical educational training you need to have in order to go that step, um, that step further of establishing what your your real and true purpose is. So that's my contribution. 
Did, did you give four or you there were only four. three? Four. What was the fourth one? Pursuing your goals. Pursuing your goal. Okay. Graham, I want you to jump in here. Um, I want to, you to examine something for me or comment on something. If a, let's say a child uh, were scheduled to do seven CXCs, they got back the results and the results weren't good. Or they were, let's say they wanted to further go into a, a tertiary um, education, but the, the CXCs weren't enough or they weren't adequate. What, what would you suggest to a parent and a child at this point in, ter in terms of what direction should they go from there? Well, if, if the, first thing, do not be discouraged by the initial setback. So just see it as a setback and see it as if, if this is something that I still want to pursue, there are still avenues for me to get where I need to go. Now, obviously, those avenues are going to take some time because this first opportunity would have been gone. However, mm. that's why, that's why in pondering it, what Judy was saying just now, one thing I would say to everybody is that you have to enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. You want to you want to have goals for sure because you want to know where you're going, but you mm -hmm. want to enjoy the process and see value in every. Step so, so you're you're process. you're saying, Graham, that even even when it looks hard and hopeless, you yeah. still got to find yourself in a place where you are enjoying enjoy the, the process. Exactly, enjoy mm -hmm. the process. You mm -hmm. have to learn from your failures. If you if you if you um if you were doing seven CXCs and you only got about four, you got to figure out what what was they doing that that didn't allow me to get the other three. So mm -hmm. when I when I go ahead again, then mm -hmm. I know that I'm going to be successful. So learn from your mistakes. You know, you as human beings, we I mean that would be the hardest thing to do <laughs> to do to learn from our mistakes. Uh -huh. you know, we gotta learn from our mistakes, see where we fell down and put things in place. But no, no, obviously that's gonna take time now for you to go and reset the CXCs. During that period of time, where you 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 still wanna be working toward your goal, you still wanna be making strategic alliances. For instance, if I if I my aim is is to still get the university to do accounting, I might not get, I might not have the five seven CXCs required to do me my accounts at UE or whatever it is, but I can still, maybe if I connect with a, a, a accounting firm, I can still do a, a, a part time internship uh, mm. on a mm. mm -hmm. and just go in and, you know, see somebody doing something and make some That's observations right. and some notes. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. And all oh, this time, I'm still studying for my accounts exam. So when my accounts exam comes on now, Bam, I know what I've done before. I know how to approach it and how to get a better, a better grade. When I go into CXC, uh, when I go into CXC, I mean, the, the UE now, after, after finishing my exams and I come out, guess which form I go to to face see if I could get a job. Mm -hmm. mm. that I've been mm -hmm. interning free, mm -hmm. it's free. You know what I'm saying? You're doing it for free because the right. fact, right, right? Yeah, yeah. fact of the matter is, is that you are doing it for the experience and for making experience. Mm -hmm. And if you're making a really good mm -hmm. impression, you'd be surprised. As soon mm -hmm. as you come to UV, you're going to get a phone call. That's what are you right. doing yourself? It's mm -hmm. true. And every summer that you, that you in, you're not UV, you're going by. Are you working mm -hmm. for free? <laughs> you mm -hmm. for free? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you, what you're doing is you're building, you're building firstly the relationship, the connect, and you're, and you're also building what you call good faith. That's right. About possible employers. So mm -hmm. don't, don't, see, don't see it as, don't see an initial failure mm -hmm. as a, just a failure. See it mm. as a setback, and mm -hmm. you are going to still you're still going to enjoy the process, and you are mm -hmm. still going to get where you need to go, and you can build through the process, even in the field, even in the setback, you can still build. Mm -hmm. So, so, so quickly, uh -huh, right? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. in, in that process, here we see the importance of the parents' role mm -hmm. because the way they navigate the failure will determine how soon they put themselves back on the path to success. And mm -hmm. sometimes not even failure. And I couldn't tell you from my personal experience. I remember when I was studying, I was doing computer science, mm -hmm. some wonderful subject areas, mm -hmm. but I failed the subject. I came home, I was so depressed. I remember lying down, face down on my bed. But I felt my parents that came into this room, into the room and they said, we know you did your best. So mm -hmm. just relax, you know, don't mind, don't beat yourself down. What you probably need to find out, what are the correct subjects for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So seeing that they then put me down, mm -hmm. right away, my mind started to think forward. Right. So I'm saying this because, you know, sometimes you get feedback, you know, plants. 
I pay so much money and I do so mm -hmm. and so. Mm -hmm. So tough and you're so ex. No, it is a process where they're learning to find themselves. Mm -hmm. They have to understand because they fail one particular area, it is not going to stop them from progressing in life. That's so we right. have as parents to embrace a role that is very supportive, especially when you know that child is working hard. You know, create the environment that they want to go again, try again. Because I had, I, I mentioned before, I fail math. Seems like I fail a lot of things. Wait, I fail math. <laughs> <laughs> I fail math. But because of that, I was able to connect because I had to go and repeat school just for one subject, you know, because mm. of that, I could not get into UE mm -hmm. unless you have math and English. So because of that, now I had to go back to school and they said, well, you can't just come here and do math alone. So that's when I picked up principles of business, principles mm -hmm. of accounts mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. visual arts. What am I doing today? Embracing exactly. all of those subjects. <laughs> You see what wow. I mean? Yes. So the role of the parents are very critical. And I would like to under help parents understand this. It is a journey walk with the children. And, and, and sometimes they, they connect their failure with their, what's the word now? With who they are. And they mm -hmm. feel like That's failure. Right. They, they, own, they, own, they, they own the failure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's just an experience. It's just sometimes a detour something that will really make your life fulfilling you know right. just come on there but work with them i just wanted to highlight that point there and i would support you sheridine one thousand percent and more wow. because it is so important for parents to be supportive you know i a lot of what we do as counselors you you, you have to get people to understand um certain things so i use a lot of my um personal experiences where I can. And, you know, I, I think in terms of raising my son, you know, I mentioned that my son is 30 years old. And he, at school, he was very laid back and I would have to push him. And it was really hard getting him to really focus in school. You know, sometime this year, he found his old report. He went through BCC, wanted to give up. And I said, no, giving up is not an option. You just can't give up. You just can't start things and give up. You have to persevere. And he persevered and he, you know, even when he thought that he was, he, he, he was failing and should drop. I said, no, you, I'm going to be here with you. I'm going to right. be guiding you with you. And he went back for another year and he completed his associate degree. Then he went to Kierfeld and he had some challenges and so on, but he ended up with an, um, lower seconds. And the other day he looked at his, school report from primary school, um, from secondary school. And he said, you know, you know, mommy, I come a real long way. I mm. come a real long way. And the only reason I came this far is because of you. And he Very was good. so emotional. And I, I, I was like, who are you? Oh, oh please. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I said, oh, okay. because, you know, I, I never in this world figured that he would have acknowledged it. So mm. you, you, you have to What's remain behind your children you got it it's going to be tough for some of them because they're all not going to be at the same level so thank right. you sheridan and i shared you know that my personal dear. experience just to let you know how real that situation is as well mm -hmm. very good very good you did well <laughs> yeah, that, that's 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 totally fantastic exactly. <laughs> i like that great but what, what was coming in my head from your story julia is mm -hmm. Um, I heard, like, the child, you do the work, but me, the parent, mm -hmm. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to mm -hmm. so encourage mm -hmm. you. I'm going to mm -hmm. push you. I'm going to be the ear that you need. Maybe you can talk. Maybe you need to, to, to share something. That's I'm right. going to be there, but mm -hmm. I'm going to encourage you. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe, maybe, and as, as, as Sharon was saying, uh, maybe we, we allow our children to own the failure than 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 as Graham was saying, enjoying the journey, right. so that that we make failure seem as it as not it's a failure is just a a part of the journey. It is mm -hmm. a is mm -hmm. a part of it's where not, we are going, but it is right. not it is it not is our not destination. destination. 
Right? Mm-hmm. So, so, so yes, there are things, and, and we, we be real with the children, Graham, and we let them know at times you fail, at times mm-hmm. you fail, but it doesn't mean that you are a failure. Exactly. It just means that on a journey to where you are going, mm-hmm. you may fail. But mm-hmm. our responsibility as the, the parent is to say, no, you keep going. No, 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 you don't give mm-hmm. up. You mm-hmm. keep going. And, mm-hmm. and they need to hear that in, in their ears frequently. And I think that's what makes a difference mm-hmm. where there's an encourager that tells you um, you, can, you, can, you can make it. You are, you are, not, a, you are not a failure. You, exactly. you will do well. You are that's all right. right. You know, mm-hmm. and I think I think that element is missing in a major way. So, mm-hmm. so ladies and gentlemen, we have like three minutes to go. So, I want to give yeah. you some time to just give your closing points. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with Graham, and then I'll go to Sheridan and Julia. I'll let you finish up. Um, so, you know, any any conclusive thoughts that you may have that our li- viewers and listeners should really uh, pay attention to that you know will be valuable to them in this in this journey because um, this is August. There was graduation. Um, children are going to go on to the next stage mm-hmm. and September is coming. And what is, what am I going, what am I going to do in September? So, so, so Graham, go ahead and, and share your thoughts, please. Right. So first they want to say again to all the parents out there, you know, you, you want to continue to make your observations, continue to gather that information, continue to see the trends, continue to see where the passion is like, continue to see where everything is going. And then start to guide. You know, you're, you say you're the guide on this side. Start to guide and encourage and provide as many experiences as you can. Where, where, where a student can see himself or herself involved in what's going on and can see themselves moving forward, right? Can see themselves moving in a direction that will, as I say, benefit them and benefit you and benefit everybody in the entire world. So make those auditions. Secondly, give them give them connections give them experiences and, and mentorships um car racing um dressing making whatever provide them with inf- information provide them with experiences that they, they can see what they like and what they don't like at the beginning the options will be a, will be a lot but as they get closer and closer to understanding what they're really about and who they really are those mm-hmm. options will start to narrow until eventually that singular or two, those two singular options will start to move forward. And once, and once, they, once they identify those, enjoy the process moving forward. Enjoy it. Don't, don't take a failure as a failure. Take a failure as a setback, but I'm mm-hmm. to move forward toward my goal. Well, oh, thank you. Sharni? I think one word I'll leave, them, leave the parents with is alignment. Look for alignment and the assignment will come. All right? When you can align knowledge of the child, of the career, what makes them, you know, happy, then you'll find what is the assignment or the career as you continue on that pathway, then a sense of purpose will come out. So look for wow. alignment. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I essentially want to remind parents that, you know, they the choosing a career and finding that purpose in life is a process and it's a lifelong journey. It's not something that will begin and end one day. It will take time. And it essentially requires them to be, to have a relationship with their children and to be able to understand their children. I want them to remember the four step um, plan, helping the child to have a understanding of him or herself. So the, the, the child then get to ask some important questions. Who am I? Where am I going? Things like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Explore the possibilities. Understand that there are um, opportunities out there, lots of them. Explore Explore them, do research, do the internships, ask questions, do the interviewing. Choose a direction. And when you choose a direction, make sure that you you understand where that direction is going to take you. Mm -hmm. And then start looking at pursuing the goals. Pursuing the goals, once you have the direction, you, you start in terms of what education the child will need. And how to go about it. And those times when it seems as if things are difficult in terms of the education, reach out and get help. Mm. Reach out and get that help that will help the child to 
consolidate all that they're learning about the particular subject areas that they are working in. And of course, a failure today, a failure is only a failure if you allow it to be won. Use failure to your benefit. It can work. You can find another way. It's just simply it didn't work out this way. There's another pathway that you can follow. It might take a little longer, but you're going to get there nevertheless. So those are my parting words. Yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you, three uh, wonderful people full of knowledge and, and education and, and bringing things to a different um, point of view to us. And I want to say to our viewers and to our listeners that we, you stop looking at your, your, your life and areas that you, you fall short on as failures, but use them as a stepping stone to go to the next level, to, as a stepping stone to develop yourself. You only fail when you have given up. There, 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 and, and there are many persons who would have gone through school and not leave school with anything. And today, there are some of the richest people in the world. Mm -hmm. They were rejected by major companies and so on, they're, and they're sure. rich. We, we, we never fail until we give up. That's when we, we fail. And I want to encourage our parents to get behind your children, get behind your grandchildren, push them, let them try stuff, let them try different things, because you never know. Um, they may not have all the answers at this point, or they may even be getting all lazy, but it's your responsibility to push them. Because if you don't push them, who's going to do it? Don't, don't let us leave it to the teachers to do, but let us see it as, the, as our responsibility to do. And, and Julia shared a personal experience. Um, Sheridan shared, shared, shared hers. Um, it's important to keep going. It's important to not give up. Graham said, don't let your failure be your stopping, but allow it to be. The, uh, uh, it's, a it's a journey and, and it's not your destination. So I want to thank you, um, Dr. Graham. I want to thank you, Sheridan. I want to thank, thank you, Julia. You're welcome. Very much for coming on the program again and sharing your wealth of knowledge. I pray God bless you all. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what an amazing session. Thank you for being with us this evening. We hope that something we would have shared with you would resonate in your mind and you will be a better parent or you'll be a better child. Let us work together as parents. Parents see your responsibility as pushing your children. Children, you don't give up. You keep going. You are a champion. You are going to make it. So we pray that, that what we would have shared with you this evening would be of great help to you and will help you to come into a place where you know you are going to make it. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.